Hello there and good morning or good afternoon or even good evening depending on when you're watching this video. My name is Roger A. Price and my strap line says I'm a crime fighter turned crime writer. Well as cheesy as that is and it is cheesy uh, I guess pretty much uh, it, it says what it is. I spent 30 years uh, in the police, um, left there as a DI in charge of a, an undercover drugs unit, which was great fun. Um, having spent time in a variety of squads, and including the National Crime Squad, which became the National Crime Agency, as is now. Uh, and it's from all sort of experiences that uh, my writing flows from. Um, now then, I've got several questions I've been asked by those lovely people at Endeavour Media. Uh, my current publisher and I'll try to answer them as honestly as I can. Uh, you travel throughout Britain, Europe and the world. Where was your favourite destination and why? Um, I, I guess that line relates to uh, my previous occupation and I have travelled to some interesting, very interesting places. Um, and uh, But I guess Bangkok was probably the most interesting for a lot of reasons, good and bad. Um, I mean, unlike you don't sort of get a lot of time, you know, when you're working uh, abroad to actually enjoy the way you are sometimes, contrary to a lot of popular belief by those left behind. Uh, it's all work, really, not a lot of play. But uh, I've always thought I'd love to go back to Bangkok as a, as a, a visitor. Uh, I've yet to realise that dream, but that would be nice. Uh, but that particular job was very interesting because. You know, we were investigating a, a bunch of uh, criminal, criminals from the northwest who wanted to buy several tons of drugs from Chinese triads uh, operating out of Hong Kong. As you do. Mind blowing, isn't it? And my job was to sort of get in, get over there and find out uh, what's going on, basically, through a variety of intelligence gathering means, none of which I can really go into. Uh, but one of the uh, memories that sticks in my mind was when the uh, I mean the tribes came in from Hong Kong and the Brits came in from Britain and they sort of met in Bangkok as a, as a sort of communal meeting place on neutral ground, neutralish. Um, and they discovered there was a spy in the camp, and they were trying to find out who that person was to do dastardly things to. Uh, well, they never found me, so no, 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 no. And they're all, well, they're all in prison now, they're probably out of prison now, but there you go. I shouldn't be too, uh, too boorish about it, should I? Uh, so that was an, an interesting, very interesting place. So the next question, moving on. Um, okay, as a detective inspector in a covert drugs unit, you must have experienced so much. What was the best part of your job? Now then, it's easy to talk about the big jobs, is it not? I mean, I've just touched on Bangkok and... When that job came to fruition, there was 43 tonnes, would you believe, of the damn stuff um, seized in eight countries around the world. All the bad guys got arrested and all bar two were convicted. Um, three years of my life. And you could say, well, that's, you know, best part of my job or my career was that. Uh, and maybe it was. But one job particularly sticks in mind. And just, I remember towards the end of my career, I was running an undercover unit where basically we used to buy drugs of the bad guys and then we'd go and arrest them some months later having recorded all the evidence of their drug dealing and surprise, surprise, you're being arrested and the evidence is already in the bag. Now, on the arrest phase of these operations, this one was in a, a northern town, I won't say where, um, I sometimes used to sort of dress up like a normal DI, I've got inverted commas, and I go on the knocker a bit and try and reassure people that this 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 dreadful cancer that's been living in their street and with all the antisocial behaviour that goes, we've been disturbed at all hours with people trying to buy drugs and discarded needles in your front garden and all the horrendous thing that goes with it. I was trying to sort of reassure people that this problem uh, had gone and gone forever and not, you know, they won't be out on bail three hours later back doing what they've always done. This time, you know, I couldn't explain exactly why, but I knew, I knew the evidence was 100% gold and uh, they won't be coming back. And I knocked on one door, it was opposite the, the, you know, the target address, 
uh, and the curtains were drawn so I was a bit in two minds should it knock or not thinking well maybe there's a bit of bereavement you know you don't have to disturb people anyway this lovely old chap answered the door he must have been in his 80s or 90s tried to meet him explained why I was there and you know reassured that this wasn't just a you know a short-term solution these people were proper gone uh, and his little face lit up and uh, anyway, some of goodbyes and uh, time to move on and he said to me before I left would you do me a favour officer I said yeah of course I would he said would you open the curtains for me and I had been wondering why they were shut and we sat in a quite, a, quite a darkened room really considering it was during the day so I said yeah of course I will I opened the curtains he must have seen the question on my face and he said to me um, I've had them shut for five years just to block it all out I thought, crikey, you know, is that what life has really been like for this, this poor old chap? And, and to know that you relieved him of that burden, that's probably the best job of my career, really, that, I think. So, yeah, yeah, sometimes not all the biggest is the best um, from the point of view of value, really, I guess. Okay, looking to one side again, the next question is, why did you choose to start the badge and the pen series when you did uh, nemesis and vengeance and others to follow um, are in the badge and the pen series and in that series i really wanted a mixture from the covert sneaky beaky stuff and your normal sort of detective uh, story i also wanted two main lead viewpoint characters a man and a woman because i do feel in british crime writing at the moment there's not a great representation of strong female leads and i wanted to put that right um, several surveys I've done show that certainly at least half my readership are, are female so they need to be represented and uh, not just represented in a patronising way either um, and I've got Vinnie Palmer and Maverick D.I. in the badge and the pen uh, that's the badge side and the, the, his, uh, his contemporary is, uh, is Christine Jones and she's a, a strong sassy uh, investigative TV journalist hence the pen uh, and uh, they help each other out, have the trouble, they're, uh, they're equal standing, they go off in their own directions in subplots and then come crash together uh, towards the conclusion of the novel. So that's that's good fun. And also when I was in the job, just to add, um, sometimes a place in the press had a bit of a fractious relationship. Uh, I never did, but some senior officers did. They used to think the press were there for their bidding, you know, hold the front page. But didn't like it when they got criticised when they dropped uh, mistakes from along the line. Well, we're all accountable, are we not? And we should be in public office, so I've no problem for that. Um, for my mind, the press and the and the, the police have to the same thing. The truth, just coming from perhaps different directions, and they should respect that. So, but I thought in in fictional or fictional word world, uh, it should be good good fun to sort of rub those two off against each other. So that was the. Uh, the rationale behind that okay it's time to, to let you go and i hope you've enjoyed this little uh, this little video interview thank you bye